I could stand here and tell you everything she's done, but we'll be here all night. The, the last thing she did was um, South Bank Centre, right? Yeah. Listen, she's serious. Are you ready? Please welcome to the stage, Red Medusa. And, you know, I, I was just defending myself, that's the realist, I was just defending myself and I got taken away in a van and slapped with a criminal conviction and my whole modelling career came crashing down and I realised who were my friends, who weren't my friends, and a whole heap of stuff, but you know, I wouldn't take it back, I wouldn't take it back, I'd lick the fed again. <laughs> So I'm going to try and squeeze five poems into my 15 minutes, yeah? And um, I'm sure everyone's aware of what's going on with women right now. You know I'm not going to let it, I'm not going to let it slide. I have to touch on that because that's what I do. So, um, but first, before I do that, I'm going to go look at against my lineup that I wrote myself. I'm just going to do it all the wrong way around. And I'm going to start by saluting my Egon, which are my ancestors. So. I deal with the Kumi, um, it's Santeria, it's probably stuff you see in the movies that looks like more scary witchcraft shit, but it's not that. It's just ancestral veneration, and before I do anything, I have to send them. So, um, you know, feel free to deal with who you deal with and call their meds and excuse my papers. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to have a stand, Paul. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's Yankee talk, Glamour. Right. <laughs> She's not here. I know. Alright. Um, also, um, disclaimer, my anxiety is through the roof right now, so I'm just, I'm not able to recite for you today, but it's mind over matter, so be patient here. Okay. I hear your name is Egun. I hear it is you who I felt surround me at times when I felt naked and exposed to the elements. And it is you who sends those signs and wonders. Symbols and numbers, times and feathers and feelings and places. You who embrace me and bless me with dreams and visions of what will come should I will it. Deep, deep down, I've always known that you were there. Like that day you told me not to take that change. And the day you told me to go right when I wanted to go left. And the time I could have been shot, but stayed at home instead. I feel that tugging at the pit of my gut and move about question because you have never let me down. Your presence is always felt inside and out. I see you in my mother's eyes, feel you in Nana's voice, taste you in my food and wash by you in water. I channel you with my words and honour you with my actions. I live because you live and you live because I live. So humbly and fiercely I tread the ground you walked upon, strengthened by your stories and guided by your light. Armed with the knowledge that your blood runs through my veins, memories of greatness expressed through my DNA remind me not to be afraid. I am safe. Yes. In your embrace, I am safe. I walk the path and you show me the way, and in return, I will elevate your spirit by candlelight until my day becomes night and I return home to you. You will be honoured in all that I do. My fellow fun, Egon. I'm racing through these because you need to hear them all because they're just good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> this one's for the sisters, it's called These Hands, and I dedicate this to all the sisters and all the, the, the feminine spirits in the room. Um, through the last 10 years, it have been the sisters that have really elevated me, picked me up, and carried me through the bullshit. So, this is for you, and for you, and for Alona. All right. And it's called These Hands. I have opened my eyes to find myself face down in the dirt many times. Unable to summon the strength to pick myself up, not even the gods could have raised me from the dead. In fact, they had left me there to rot. There have been times when my mouth could not open, sound could not escape, and my cries for help were silent screams echoing in the darkness, and my body had married the mud it lay in. 
and waited to be digested and absorbed back into the womb of the earth. But right before I had submitted to the cause of my angels and the joy of my demons, hands held my wrists, waist, back, neck, head, and feet, lifting me out of the grave I had dug for myself and propelling me into the warmth of the midday sun. And that warmth warmed those hands which wiped my eyes, clearing my vision so I could see my path ahead. They placed me in healing waters, removing life's heavy debris with salt and flame, making my spirit balanced and whole again. They stood me in the four winds to remind me that to feel was to live. And once I was dry and breathing again, naked and reborn, these hands draped me in white cloth, clothing me with the wisdom of sages, adorning my ears with gems buried in the minds of the ancients who had come and gone before I was being put together again, made whole and fed with knowledge. These hands placed swords in mine, and taught me to fight against the world that sought to leave me buried in that mud. They gave me back my voice by speaking life into my soul. They fixed my crown, weaving gold thread into my locks, reminding me of my connection to the divine and to every hand who had reached out and placed their hands in mine. Those hands who had saved my life over and over and jano over again were the hands of sisters, daughters, aunts and cousins, maidens, mothers and crones. They were hands of artists and warriors, survivors and diviners, musicians, magicians, healers and dealers. They, <laughs> they are queens and witches, femmes and bitches, queers and whores, white and black, whole and cracked, strangers, neighbours and friends. They are the daughters of the earth. They were the hands of women. one and actually one in two women in the room will know what this shit's about. It's called Never Scared. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. I'm just going to read it, yeah? Um, trigger warning. All kinds of shit. <laughs> <laughs> the list is too long. <laughs> All right. You told them I, was, I wasn't scared because I didn't flinch when you got into my face, when you raised my voice, when you broke my face. And that I wasn't scared because when you demanded my silence, screaming, you don't know when to shut up! And when you sprayed spit and insults at me like a machine gun loaded with fury, shooting me down with insults in a desperate attempt to put me back in my place, I stood there like a whitewashed wall absorbing your bullets, feeling them lodge within my psyche whilst I wore that wall's blank expression to mask the crafts and holes that you had left embedded in my spirit. You convinced yourself that I wasn't scared because you couldn't see the knots forming in the pit of my belly and you didn't feel the way you caused my chest to tighten and my breath to turn shallow. You didn't hear the million thoughts demanding that I run, be still, keep quiet, shout back, clashing with the hot stinging tears that I wrestled with to keep concealed until I could find a moment of safe release away from you. But I was afraid that I might be one of the two women a week killed by a former partner because I dared to answer back to give him lip. And I was afraid that you might smash up my house because I ran my mouth. And even in sharing this, I'm afraid that I'll be disbelieved. And that your family will back you out of a sick sense of loyalty. And we both know that society will ask why I didn't leave, even though I already left. As if leaving could ever stop an abuser from enacting abuse on another. The truth is I didn't flinch, because you wasn't the first to make my voice shake. Many before you have visited violence upon me, and I'm sure you'd have me believe that I'm to blame, that my experiences are a result of the poor decisions I've made. But I refute that convenient assumption, because it's hard to see a white flag in a sea of red flags, when a sea of red flags is all you on. And it's hard to see the warning signs when the warning signs are normalized and sexism is institutionalized and the victims are then victimized by agents that were hired to protect us. Mm. We're being murdered daily because society neglects us and gaslit into believing that this shit reflects us. Mm. As if compliance to patriarchal norms could ever make men respect us. Mm. Nah. I won't internalize, I won't internalize the blame for the shameful acts that men enact and we've been forced to tolerate. And to every sister listening, discard that shame you've carried. It doesn't belong to you. And you're no less strong because you refuse to stand by a man that abuses you. Leaving only makes you stronger. What's fucked up 
is that it also makes you more prone to violent men. Mm. Again, I tell you, when, people, when you tell people this, they won't believe you, but I do. I see my scars in yours. I see your stories in mine. I recognise that fear behind your eyes and I believe you. You are not crazy. You are not tapped. You do not have a problem. You are not confused. And the abuse you've become used to is not just domestic, it's systematic. So don't let anybody tell you that you're being too emotional, that you're acting over the top. Keep going, sis. One day, it will be safe for us to speak our truth. And when that day comes, we won't stop to consider the fatally potential consequences of speaking out. We won't worry about beating up, being beaten up if we shout back. We won't worry if we have to walk with keys between our... Oh, no. We won't have to walk between, with keys between our fingers after dark. We won't have to walk the long way because men make it dangerous, up, dangerous for us to walk through the park. We won't have to police the way we dress. We won't have to write poems about being oppressed. One day. We won't have to feel like our lives are constantly under threat. One day. I've got time for. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. Time. Time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> <Not the> time. <laughs> okay, now this one is called Medusa's Aperture. Now an aperture is a warning. Yeah. It's a word that I just thought was really sexy and instead of saying warning, I just thought oh, aperture. I like it. All right. Um <clears throat> Yeah. <laughs> um again, not gonna tell you what it's about, you just take it in, yeah. I've got to protect myself, which means I've got to keep me safe from anything or anyone that compromises my peace, from anything or anyone that tries to make me choose between me and myself. Because I cannot be split apart and leave parts of me discarded, disregarding my black but not my woman, or my woman but not my black. I've got to keep this black woman safe from those who seek to do her harm and speak of strength in reference to the shit that she endures. Those who tell her about the chip on her shoulder, the same who attempt to chip away at her confidence, her worth, her place in the world, yet can barely sit in the splendour of her presence. I protect her from the sharpness of their words and the bluntness of their fists. I shield her from the cutting fake smiles and the strong controlling grip and I do this to keep her alive because out there the world wants her dead. Pedophiles prey on her, predators target her, police abuse her, science exploits her and if a man does not, childbirth will kill her. I know what I'm up against. So do not try to soften me or minimalize the trials I, fa I face and do not try to champion my oppressors by calling me strong, even if it's true, because almost everything I do, I do to survive. I've had to fight my way to be, to be where I am today and I bear the scars of battles fought on me, over me, around me and inside of me. Those who cut parts away and keep the pieces as trophies, who curate and collect artworks painted with my blood, they have left their mark on me for the last time. When they come again, I will be ready. I will sever heads and hands. I will turn mortals into stone. And the screams, cries and moans of those women, burnt, drowned and raped, will colour the air red, becoming the backdrop of a vengeful slaughter. Women, mothers, aunts and daughters will awaken from their slumber to be adorned in armour forged by hands that deliver children into this world, now ready to take lives out of it. We will bear our breasts, calling down spirits and chanting to drumbeat, swaying our hips and lifting our feet, singing, singing and shaking, burning and breaking, looting and shooting, until we are heard. And the ground shake and swell and then open up to swallow and reclaim justice back from the hell from which it came. And when its blood has finished staining the earth and its poison no longer rots away at the hearts of the good, we will throw down our swords and put out our torches. We will wrap our hair and wear our regal dress, our thirst for equality and balance of dress, and I will finally rest, not needing to protect my black or my woman, instead reveling in the everything that I am, celebrated, imitated, and everything beautiful in between, reclaiming my place in the cosmos as queen. Okay, so I printed this out, right? But I've got a couple of really, really sexy poems. Um, yes, so I'm gonna yes, yes, So, um, I'm gonna give you a choice, yeah? I've got snake skin. Um, I've got B-W-M. Oh. B-W-M. B-W-M. It's because it sounds kinky, innit? That's why you like it. Don't tell me I'm good. 
I have to draw for the phone because I didn't print this one. All right. So I'm going to be real unprofessional and draw for the phone. No, I'm just a perfectionist, Jody. It's, it's my nature. Yeah. Don't don't watch me. You know, if you bring your phone to read from, don't feel no way. Okay. I'm just. It's the autism. It does this thing. All right. Okay. Okay. Mm. All right. Where are you? Okay, here we go. Got the reception here, people. All right. All right. Okay, again, trigger warning. Everything. Everything again. Yeah. <laughs> and I think this will be my last one because it's quite, it's, it's a bit lengthy, but it's, it's good. Sleep has been reserved for the dead. <laughs> Sleep has been reserved for the dead. Every breath, a deep sigh, forced out of a tight chest. I can't breathe. This can't be. I can't even sleep in my own bed for fear of being shot dead. I didn't resist the rest, but they say I did. They say I did, drug I did drugs and neglected my kids. They'll spit on my character and dance on my grave. Post an angry picture of my face and shout, All lives matter! While my sister scream, say her name! That undercover clan member will get away with murder. That undercover fed will surely kill again. Next time in a police cell, a rape, a beating, a hanging note, it will be a suicide. Because I was unstable. Unable to drive a vehicle with a broken tail light and upon confrontation, I put up a fight. Of course I had it coming. How dare I challenge a white man? How dare I look him in the eye? How dare I show him I am not afraid? They'll say I have too much attitude and no respect for law and order. I was insubordinate, I was strong, I was uncontrollable, I had a mental health disorder. Imagine if I did. Imagine how quickly I'd be picked up, tasered, restrained, locked up and locked in with rapists in uniform. Left for dead, found cold on the floor in the morning, as if I was nothing, as if I never existed. A brief mention in the news of some girl called Brianna, Sandra, Sarah, Maybe a protest once they suffocated another one of my brothers. Maybe I'll be a hashtag buried in a million tweets about him. Maybe my murder will be relevant for a short time at least. Before this beast goes after my daughter, my sister, my cousin, my mother, my niece. Another black woman made invisible in life and death. Another black woman pushed into the background. Will that be her? Will they rage and write and burn that beast to its bones? Will they check on my children now that they are alone? Will they say my name when I'm framed as a terrorist? Will they speak truth to power when lies are spat from my killer's lips? Will my brothers storm the building and paint the streets red? Will the only time I matter be when I'm dead? Will the only time I matter be when I am dead? Thank you.